welcome to the John 3.30 podcast. He must increase, I must decrease, is the message John 3.30 invites us to live. Incorporating this into our everyday lives can be a challenge. What keeps your fire burning? We have many wonderful ways to stay close to our faith, whether it be the Mass, spiritual readings, prayer, adoration, or the Rosary. This is Catholic Faith Life, and here's our host, Jason Nunez. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the John 3.30 podcast. This is your host, Jason Nunez, and welcome to episode number 50. That's right. We have made it to episode number 50. Uh, Before we get going and before we get to our very, very, very special guest, I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank everyone for supporting, for being along on this journey with me through the past 50 episodes. Uh, Back at the beginning, when one episode came out, and then another episode came out, and then months later, the third episode came out, and then months later, the fourth episode came out and then it became a weekly weekly occurrence thank you all for staying with me and thank you for listening you have no idea what it means to me i've have had some people come and come up and tell me that that they've heard the podcast and because of what they've heard they have looked into some of the different items that have been discussed such as going to confession as a family and um some other some other topics that we have discussed so that tells me that people are listening and that what's going on here is working. That is very special to me, and I want to thank you all. Um, we're going to get to some more thank yous at the end, but without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get with episode number 50 here with our very special guest, uh, a man that's been on my short list since uh, the John the 30 podcast was a idea in my head. And um, it's Mr. Phil Rosenfeld. Hey, Phil, how are you? I'm doing great, Jason. Great to be here. <laughs> yes, thank you for taking time out of your day, literally out of your day, to to um, to um, meet up with me and recording episode number 50, which is a very special one for me. Uh, so before we, we get going, I mentioned before in episode 49 that the John 330 pair was going to be quote-unquote retired. Um, we're going to move on to something different, and it is time to find out what that something different is. And I was introduced to this beautiful prayer by uh, by by Mr. Chris Lehman and also by Phil Rosenfeld as well. So um, I felt it was special and appropriate to introduce it into the fold with with Phil Rosenfeld uh, coming on the episode here. So uh, without uh, further ado, Phil, if you can do me the honor of leading us in the in, in the new beginning prayer that will be said before every episode of the podcast, which is the litany of um, humility, please. Thank you, Jason. And I like to start uh, the litany of humility and really all meetings with an invocation to the Holy Spirit. And I simply say, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that in the opinion of the world, others may increase while I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the will to desire it, that others may be chosen while I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be praised while I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. 
Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And and can I just jump in here and say, for people who haven't been exposed to that prayer, uh, the word calumniated, you may not have heard, and it means uh, a calumny is a lie, and it means from the fear of being lied about, from the fear of being calumniated. So just a little note there. Yes, indeed. Wonderful. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Very special moment. Appreciate that very much. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the episode here, Phil. So if you can just do us a favor and share with everyone um, I'm just um, a little bit by yourself, please. Sure. Uh, I uh, am 57 years old. I was born in Chicago, born to an Episcopalian mom and a Jewish dad, which is why they sometimes call me uh, the Catholic with the Jewish name, because <laughs> I have go. a Jewish last name. Yep. Uh, didn't, my mom took us out of the church when I was seven and a half after Martin Luther King was shot. We were, uh, she was very angry at the church uh, for righteous reasons, because they didn't want to have to do with the uh, civil rights, anything to do with the civil rights uh, uh, battle that was going on. And so we didn't have God in our life after that. And uh, I found Catholicism through my wife of now we're a few few weeks away from our 25th anniversary. Wow. Uh, and she was, Lisa was a cradle Catholic uh, in Chicago. We worked together and started dating, and she's the one who first asked me to go to a Catholic Mass. And I said yes immediately. And uh, that's what started my Catholic journey, although it took a long time to get me actually through my sacraments. So uh, ended up moving right after we were married down to San Antonio uh, and uh, went to church uh, with her, began having children. I ended up having three. Me and her had three children, a boy, a boy, and a girl. And it was right before, uh, about a year before my son, my oldest son, was to have his first communion uh, that I uh, decided I wanted to become Catholic. And the event that pushed me over at that time was actually the day of Mm -hmm. Mm 9-11 on September 11th of of uh, 2001 right. and that was the day I decided I wanted to belong to something and I made I vowed to myself that then by the time the next year rolled around I would I would sign up I did the next following year joined RCIA at Holy Spirit um, and uh, went through uh, the eight months or so of classes and I, I totally loved it and I uh, had my sacraments in I believe April of 2003, and I've been uh, a person in love with Catholicism ever since, although uh, I love it more now than I ever have before. Mm-hmm. So I did end up getting involved at the church. Uh, the, the first, my first, my, my first real involvement at the church was in CYO through my kids, through coaching. I did many seasons. I, I've tried to tally up the number of seasons I've had of different sports, different kids, and I think we're up to maybe 40 different Whoa. seasons, coaching seasons. Uh, That's but, a lot of orange slices. Yeah. Yes, it sure is. That's a lot of team parties. Yep. 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 That's, uh, but, uh, that was really the first thing aside from just going to church. Uh, but a couple years after uh, RCIA, uh, I was out, I felt compelled, um, to go and help somebody else in our CIA. And as I'd said, I, I love the process. And so I volunteered as a sponsor and joined the program. And I was that year, my first year as a sponsor, I was given two men, neither, neither of which I knew. And because uh, we were short of sponsors and I went through the, the, the process with them and I love doing it, although it was um, in doing that, it, I was taken away from my family because we we have a lifelong since my kids were babies uh, practice of going to 930 mass at Holy Spirit and then going out to lunch afterwards right after. yeah. and so this threw a wrinkle in that because the RCIA was always around 930 mass 
class and then afterwards uh, I would have to go up into the room and hang out and it delayed lunch so I got a lot of flack uh, from my family uh, about it at the time so initially I said look I won't do this every year but I'd like to kind of think about doing this every other year so I got out and then came back in on another year well, this is a few years now after 2003. I got to 2008, and that's when I went on my first axe retreat. And that transformed my life going on that axe retreat. Um, and we can talk more about that, you know, throughout this this deal. But um, from that point on, uh, on that first axe retreat, I it was an, supposed to be an off year for me for RCIA. Uh, but I met a... a, a young man on the retreat uh, Jesse Villarreal and he 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 was also going through the retreat and he asked, he told me he was in RCIA and it just started and then he asked me uh, would I be a sponsor and I said absolutely wow. and so from from that point on, uh, the the program changed at RCIA. New a new person came in, Margaret Pruitt. Right, you know well. Yeah, friend and of the podcast. Yep. It it changed. Uh, I, I loved the changes so much, and it and it. I had such a wonderful year that first year. She came back that I just vowed that I never wanted to not do this. Uh, that double negative means I was always going to do it. <laughs> and so ever since then, every year I've been, I've been there, uh, continue to do acts retreats. I, I'm a musician. So I was, I always got the, uh, the free pass to be on the next retreat because they need musicians. So I've been on many every year I would be on an acts retreat. My kids got into teenage years and they started teen acts and me and my wife, Lisa, began being parent sponsors at Holy Spirit and then later at Antonian High School where they go to and where they ended up going to high school. Um, so we've done a lot of those retreats and uh, the latest change for me had been in RCIA when in this last year they asked me to be a catechist as well and I I agree to on stipulation that I got to continue being a sponsor as well because I, I was really devoted to being a sponsor. Yeah. And so I had a dual role this year in, in RCIA, and it was a great, great season that we're still in. Yep, we're still in. It's definitely been been a, a pleasure to to serve alongside you and learn from you as well through through the example that you set for all the sponsors and for everyone in the room. And kind of, kind of with, uh, with that, and thank you for, for sharing uh, what you have there. What I'm taking away is... And that's kind of one one of the reasons why I'm doing this is there's there's two events that you mentioned that have been pivotal in history that have kind of changed the trajectory of your life kind of a little bit. You know, Martin Luther King and then 9-11. So after 9-11, it's my understanding that here at our parish at, at, at Holy Spirit, the Adoration Chapel was full. It was standing room only. You know, and, you know, churches were full were filled that following Sunday. And this same kind of example of what happens when someone goes on a retreat where af- af- after the retreat, they're, they're back at it. You know, they're at church and they're, they're starting to begin to go on that path. But as days, weeks, months pass, you know, the, the attendance dwindles, that fire dwindles. Oh, how did you sustain your fire? How did you feel? How did you keep your fire burning for our faith to where the fire didn't dwindle like the way it does for, unfortunately, a lot of people? How did you do that? Um, the uh, I'm going to say two different things. I'm going to start with a, uh, I think I, I am oriented towards fire, towards being fired up. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it is my personality type. It's what uh, uh, makes uh, me a good salesman. You know, I'm a banker, but in, in the end, banking, I have to convince people to come come to our bank. Right, right. And, and uh, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at it. Uh, but I don't credit myself for that. It's just, uh, I think God gave me this gift of optimism and enthusiasm. And I've, I've always had that. They haven't always been directed in the right ways. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but, but that aside, um, the, uh, 
the the real you know firing like if you looked at me between 2003 and 2008 I think I was always on an upward trajectory and and it was early on I think in my seeking faith and now when I say early on I'll say after I became Catholic mm-hmm. uh, that I had this notion come to me and it was um, it was about slope and you know think of x y coordinates yep. Yep. and i remember i don't remember much from that is that trigonometry or geometry i can't remember uh, well i think we'll go with the geometry for geometry now. okay i yeah. don't remember a lot from that but i remember my x y axis okay. and i remember how they calculated slope and slope can be negative and slope can be zero and slope can be positive and i had this thing just come to me that said i have to be on an upward slope i i i can't control or maybe not be able to control what that number is is it a a a strongly vertical slope or is it a just barely over flat uh slope but i knew that i needed to always be searching and always be on an upward slope of working on my faith and and growing closer to god and uh so i think i was fairly purposeful about it. Uh, I didn't mention that um, the uh, couple years after I became Catholic, uh, possibly after I uh, started sponsoring again, I, I started, uh, I got into a men's Bible study that uh, was just friends. It was interdenominational and uh, it was my next door neighbor. And I started learning about the Bible for the first time. Mm -hmm. So that was really important. And when I look back, I can say we did that for three years weekly uh, for three years in a row. And at first I didn't want to do it because it seemed like it was going to be a whole lot of effort. It was Wednesday nights and it was going to be devoting every Wednesday. Right. And uh, right in the middle of the week, I am, I will uh, have a um, public confession here uh, that I am a creature of comfort and I can be selfish about uh, my time because I know what I want to do and what I want to do doesn't have to do with what other people want me to do. (laughs) And so giving up, giving that up was tough at the time, but I knew that was a thing uh, I needed to do. By the way, the the person that that had got me on that had recently lost his son, his his five-year-old son to leukemia after a two and a half year battle. So I could not say no to that person. Sure. And um, so that's what got me in it. But of course, as soon as I started, I really liked it. Uh, And I, I, it did a lot for me uh, just realizing all that's in the Bible, all that uh, we did, a, we did a f- simple format of reading, picking a book of the Bible and spending about a couple months on it, reading it very slowly from week to week. And just somebody would make up questions and it was all self-directed. It wasn't any program we did, but it allowed me to start reading the Bible very slowly. And I frankly hadn't read really any of the Bible mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the word is powerful. The Word is Holy Spirit-inspired, and as soon as you begin reading the Word, something starts happening to you. So uh, doing that, I think, fed me for three years, and it kept me going back. We would take summers off. We did it around the school schedule, really. We start in September, finish when school was out, take the summers off. But we did that for three years. And that kind of covered the ground pretty close to when I got onto my axe retreat. And from the point I got on my axe retreat, I mean, my trajectory, you know, if you talk about a slope of zero, all of a sudden I was uh, like Saturn <laughs> six, you know, right, right. Uh, the afterburners were, 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 were going. Yep. And, and for me, it didn't stop. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't have a come back to earth moment, moment. in part because I kind of I kept going on retreats and now I have a little bit different perspective uh, of that process uh, and you know in, in, in our acts world which so many around us are deeply involved in and committed yep. to and passionate about we, we call it getting on the acts merry-go-round you know where you just do retreat after retreat after retreat uh, but I'm, I'm not one I'm not going to denigrate that uh, because 
it's it's such a powerful uh, process, and it it the, the the I think I'm allowed to say the teaming process is a yep. long time for that. Uh, right. the, generally, 13 weeks, and you're going to spend a night, uh, one night a week for 13 weeks, which is, you know, a good uh, quarter of the year that you're involved and and you're going to be praying and you're going to be with brothers uh that are that are holding you up and so so it is a good sustaining process and 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 i understand it but Mm -hmm. uh why it's why people want to keep going on them but it is you you can't really go on acts forever and and acts is meant to be a spark for people and to to give them the spark of the holy spirit and so uh from that point um, I I had gotten off the other Bible study and I got invited to another one. And to show you kind of where my head's at, this was about, uh, s- I think we're in our seventh year. And so if this is 2018, so maybe it was 2011. I was already three years into Acts. And I still didn't really want to say yes again <laughs> because it was an early morning. Um, I would have to get up early before work. And uh, as a compromise to that Bible study, uh, there was a bunch of uh, men, a lot of older men that were in it, all Catholics. And I think we all agreed, let's do it every other Thursday. And that gave everybody a the, break. the comfort zone of being able to say, okay, I guess I can get up early once every other week. Right, right. Uh, and that that kept me going acts retreats going on that bible study kept me going on at least every other week basis um the reading books uh i'm i'm an avid reader um before about 2008 i never ever read a nonfiction book i'm a big fiction i I grew up as a big fiction reader Mm -hmm. i just loved reading all my life but i loved reading stories and and I, I could not read. Uh, I couldn't get through a nonfiction book, uh, even history. I mean, I, did, I wouldn't even read history books. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, some things were changing inside of me. And uh, around 2008, I started uh, reading some religious books. I also read some. Um, basically philosophy and some you know political philosophy books and things like that and i just got into into that world and all of a sudden i changed and i realized how great it was reading these kind of books and then it got hard for me to read a novel because i want <laughs> i wanted to grow yep. from what i read and of course you can grow from reading a novel but most of it is is pleasurable right. you know and not purposeful right. right so uh Kept kept reading, uh, and uh, I learned about. I always knew uh, Guadalupe Radio EWTN was out there. Yeah, I really couldn't get my finger to push the button to turn it on. <laughs> uh, I was a talk radio guy. I like listening to talk radio, and uh, I fi- well, of course that's talk radio. But uh, the, when I finally started turning it on, I became. I won't say hooked because there was times when I would fade off of it. But the more I listened to it, the more hooked I got. And I found that to be a really good way of keeping and feeding me and feeding me. Feeding is right. It's amazing how much you can learn just from listening to the Catholic radio, uh, listening to, you know, Catholic answers and different programs. It's amazing how much you learn from it. I I totally agree. And in you and I know in RCIA, I'm me and you are always pushing people get that radio station on right. in your car mm-hmm. and and i even say i love k-love so my family is a big k-love family mm-hmm. uh k-love has saved people's lives and i've i've, I've right. heard w- personal witness testimony to it mm-hmm. from hearing the right song on the radio at a desperate time and it is generally a very positive and uplifting thing so i'm not saying anything bad about k-love but you will get more uh you, out of your faith, you will learn so much more if you turn to Guadalupe Radio. And I think that a non-Catholic, uh, I'd even say maybe even a, a non-Christian, if they spent a lot of time listening to Cat, just to Catholic Answers, just to that show, right, five to seven mm-hmm. uh, every afternoon, they could 
learn as much as we can teach in an RCIA class, yep. a season. A season, right. Because right. that's really what it is, a season. It's a process overall. But, yeah, it, it isn't a, like a, a, a two-day, eight-hour class and you're done. It's an, it's an entire length of time that you go to. And listening to Catholic Answers, you can get a lot of good information from it. Yes. Yeah. So I'd, I'd encourage anybody listening, even if you think you're not, it's just like an axe retreat. Even if you <laughs> think you're not going to like it, do it. <laughs> Uh, even if you think you're not going to like uh, Guadalupe Radio, do it. You'll be surprised, and you will find that you do. I think the other thing about um, uh, keeping a fire alive, mm-hmm. it really – I've been describing a lot of things that are in a lot of ways uh, solo. They're, they're me listening to radio. They're me reading, reading. Yeah. right? But – uh, the, a huge part uh, of my journey has been being with people on a faith journey together. Mm-hmm. And of course you get that, or you get it when you go to church, right? Mm-hmm. When you go to mass mm-hmm. and the people I've been blessed to go, uh, you know, to the same church since I think it was 1999. So about 18 years, at the same church. Normally we go to the same mass, normally nine thirty. Sunday mass. And so being around those people, that's one part. Well, even doing that and have gone through going through our CIA and, and, and being a sponsor, uh, for some years, I still didn't know most of the people, you know, that I was going to church with. It was the ax retreat at Holy spirit in 2008 that started, that introduced me to this just big group of guys that once you go on an ax retreat, you're friends with all of them. Yeah. Not, not just like, Oh, I met three or four new friends. No, if there's 80 men out there, you have 80 friends after an ax retreat. And, uh, I remember even saying before, you know, I've said it in different parts of my life. Yeah. I don't, I don't need any more friends. <laughs> and that was a foolish thing to say. Uh, but, but we men, sometimes we think that way, like right. we, we want to compartmentalize and we have our people we trust. And this is, I think before, if somebody's before they've had a big faith conversion, uh, but it's, I think it's very common and I would have never thought I could find room for 80 new friends that I got over a weekend. But in fact, I could. And and I did. And then the week that you go back to church after you've been on an ax retreat for the first time and realize you know all these people, you get to go up to them, you get to go give them a hug, you get to say hello, you get to meet their wives and their kids. Yeah. And all of a sudden the church starts changing and the church becomes what I think Christ wanted it to be, which is a bunch of people loving each other, worshiping the same God and, and, and trying to just become holier together and doing it in fellowship and in love and in friendship and laughter, uh, conversation. And, and it just makes church a whole different thing. Uh, so uh, being around people at church, being around people in the, from the Acts retreat that did that, that itself transformed church for me. Right. And then being around these groups of Bible studies, because the one thing we haven't talked to is is our most recent journey uh, that we are in part together on, right. which is Bishop Fulton Sheen. Indeed. Uh, before we before we get to the Sheen, which is which is great. And it's something that um, that I look forward to weekly. Um, I, I can definitely speak to what you're saying about about going on a retreat and then coming out with 80 friends. You know, I, I, when I went on my retreat, you were there. I, I, I literally know, I literally knew no one. Mm-hmm. I just moved to San Antonio. I'd been here, I'd say for le- less than a year. I was probably in town for about, um, nine months at the time and, um, going to Holy Spirit, but it was a go to mass leave kind of a, kind of a situation. Never really anything beyond that. And coming back from that weekend, you know, I truly felt like I had 80 friends, you know, and then my wife going on her, on, on her retreat, same situation. And our, our circle, our, our circle grew from our small little unit of four to this huge, huge circle to, to now we have uh, lifelong friends who we can laugh with, we can cry with, we can pray with, we can hang out with and have fun with and make, you know, lifelong memories. And, uh, um, I'd probably say one of the closest things to 
what it's like to be in heaven. It's to when you can have that community and all go to church together and all be together in unity in king, literally in communion together, you know, at church. Yeah. The, my, my first, uh, acts retreat, uh, in 2008, there was a point during the retreat that it just, uh, that thought came to me Mm -hmm. and overwhelmed me that this must be what heaven is like. (laughs) Right. And I always thought that might be, should be a tagline, uh, for acts is, uh, experience heaven on earth. Heaven on earth, right? (laughs) Yeah. Just in a weekend. Just in a weekend. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty, pretty close there. And that, that, that ending mass is always, um, such a good, good, pure, good moment to have. Yeah. Come, coming back home, you have that feeling of, I want to stay, but I want to go back. And then you see your family and you realize why you want to come back. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And life goes on. And life goes on. And what, what, I'm, what I'm learning so far within our past, you know, half our conversation so far is staying involved. Uh, really is kind of the underlining what I'm the common thread I'm seeing with with you know what you're sharing is you're staying involved in the community by being involved in the retreats and being involved in RCIA and being involved in Bible study and and you're you're adding spiritual reading to it as well and you know um Catholic radio but kind of the baseline the foundation the underlining is staying involved because without that you know, sure, you can still have your spiritual reading, and you can still have the Catholic radio, but staying staying involved it helps you grow a lot more. I think that's right. I think that is that is the key. Uh, you and I have a mutual friend. Uh, used to be lieutenant colonel. Now it's Colonel Dan Bryden. Right, right. And I was blessed to know Dan for the short period of time he was here in San Antonio. Maybe, maybe. A, total of two years right yeah pretty so and dan we i dan came on uh uh, an axe retreat were you on that one i know i was not yeah uh and this was it's really fun when you get uh somebody who is as as advanced in his faith as deep deep of a person as humble of a person Mm -hmm. as dan is Mm -hmm. who comes in masquerading as just i'm just another retreating guy (laughs) and most of our, if you had to put a picture of the average guy who comes on an axe retreat, it's a guy that doesn't want to be there, right? Right. Some do, mm-hmm. but the average guy got pushed into it one way or another. His wife had gone. Somebody told him, you need to go. Always, we know that they're not, that, that they are there. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been involved with getting them there. We always know there's a reason that they're there. And so, moment. because... We have free will, and you can't force a man to get on that bus. Right. Right. But uh, here was Dan, and gets uh, his first turn turn to talk, and, of course, he opens his mouth and just starts <laughs> blowing people away with what he knows and, and everything. Like, whoa. I think during the middle of that retreat, we 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 said to him, we may uh, go ahead and promote you to team right now, you know, cause we need you on team. Yep. One of the things he, he joined uh, after we, I met him on retreat. I immediately j- uh, invited him to, to join our, our Thursday morning, every other Thursday morning Bible study. And he came and all of a sudden we had probably our first expert in the Bible study. And we really needed that. Uh, and, but one of the things I remember him saying, and maybe it was an Ignatius thing, or I can't remember where, came from but he talked about the process of using virtue shoving virtue into your life to crowd out vice so the more virtue that you push into your life the the less room there is for vice and we all have uh, concupiscence, right? Which right. is the tendency to sin. We yeah. get that from Adam and Eve mm-hmm. from the original fall. That's in our, that's in the river. We're in the polluted river that, that, that at the mouth that happened. Mm-hmm. And, and so we all have that. And, and I certainly have that. Uh, but the, the more things you can fill up your life with that are good and true, the less You've got time for for those vices. And I heard that and I said, that makes a lot of sense. And so it made me 
uh, because I've told you I'm a creature of comfort. I'm jealous about my own time. Uh, it, it, I, I would always want to say no if somebody asked me to do something else. And it made me start to want to say yes to that, knowing that the more I filled it up, the more I, I did things uh, and filled up my time, basically, uh, the better off I'd be because it, 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 it helps, uh, it helps you in every different way, but it also helps crowd out vice in your life. That makes a hundred percent sense to me. Like I can totally understand where, where Dan's coming from with that. Um, I, I can, I can relate to the experience you all had on the retreat because, uh, I was on the, uh, chapter two team for the last retreat we had. And, uh, he, that was his last retreat. He retended here before they moved. And, uh, so s- similar kind of, Hey, um, you're retreating, but I think we're going to kind of tap you on the shoulder and kind of have, <laughs> have you up out here right. and, you know, what do you think about this? Kind of pull him off to the side and yeah, same kind of thing. Him, him and his wife are a joy. They're, they're yeah. such wonderful people. It's, it was a pleasure uh, working alongside with them on, um, love strong retreats. And, uh, they're, there are a couple that I'm definitely working on as well to kind of have on a future episode. So kind of, um. Every now and then, they kind of circle back and kind of see how they're doing, and yeah, yeah. You know, so yes. we miss them. I we, miss them. Yes. So Dan and Diane, you guys are great. You, you guys are greatly missed here in San Antonio. We love you guys. Let's go ahead and get to Sheen. Yeah, I'm just going to say because we, yeah. if we have minutes left, the minutes <laughs> we have need to be spent on Sheen. On Sheen, indeed. Uh, Sheen, uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen. If you're a cradle catholic uh of a certain age right you you probably have heard of him uh i was not and so i had not the the name tinkled some bells in the back of my head when i first heard him uh mentioned uh but uh i didn't know him uh, Fult, uh bishop fulton sheen was uh, a, a very big uh popular figure in the 30s 40s 50s and 60s Hmm. lived till through the the late 70s i don't know how much he did in the 70s i suspect he kept doing things because he was extremely prolific he wrote over 60 books in his lifetime hundreds if not thousands of talks uh, and at least hundreds have been recorded of his talks Uh, and he had a unique gift uh it was a holy spirit filled i mean it was he was tapped in directly to the holy spirit and he had the holy spirit gave him this gift of communication and and also a huge brain so he was he was a very uh very very smart person uh but he had a very popular first radio show weekly radio show uh and then uh, he uh began in the 60s a television show mm-hmm. you might do you remember the name of the show uh, a life worth living a life worth living yep. thank you because i didn't yep. remember it um and this was such a huge just to give you some impact of who this guy was uh in the uh 1960s he had 30 million weekly listeners right. in the united states and i believe there was about 150 million people back then in the United States. So, uh, you know, fully 20% of the population uh, was listening to him every week. And of course it was a different time and there were fewer channels and there was fewer things to listen to. But if all you'd have to do is listen to him a little bit and you would understand why they were doing that. I, I, I say uh, my, my description of him is he's a, a combination of, uh, Billy Graham and a, a Paul Harvey, the radio host, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. his he's such a unique orator, and he was yeah. so comfortable behind the microphone. His phone. cadence is very, very unique. Yes, very unique, and and he's funny, and he's got a great sense of humor, as, as I think all good communicators uh, probably need to have. Right. So, uh, a year and a half ago. In our Thursday Bible study, we every other week, as I mentioned, right. we were looking for. We had gotten frustrated. I had gotten frustrated. We gotten. We were too free form, and it was just uh, uh, um, just too loose. And and the talks were. We'd get good nuggets out of it, but it was uh, it would devolve and get distracted, and uh, at times would delve into politics and mm-hmm. and and stuff that's getting off track. Yeah, yeah. totally off track. So. 
I put out the call uh, there just to we had a big a lot of a lot of names that, on the email list that were invitees who maybe had never come, but there were way more names than people who came. So we put out a, a, a call saying we're looking for a more formalized Bible study. A man who was on that that um, email chain was a man named Jorge Aguilar, and he uh, came the next week and he introduced us to a program that was uh, uh, based on audio recordings that were done in, in 1964. Mm-hmm. And uh, he calls it the Catechism of the Catholic Church. But they are 50 lessons that he recorded. And he did this with no notes in front, with a microphone and a recorder in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And he spoke for over, and in total, for over 24 hours. He did 50 audio recordings that, are, that range from 24 to 28 minutes long. And they build the entire story from nothing. He starts with nothing and he builds from nothing. He goes and introduces us to who God is. He introduce, introduces us to Jesus without requiring that we believe in him, but he mm-hmm. makes case and he uses reason. He teaches us that we can use our reason to come to our faith. It's not just a matter of faith. We, using our reason, yep. we can learn, but we have to have a guide and he's the guide. So I went through that uh, process over and so uh, over 50 weeks, that group, and by the way, that's what changed us. We knew we weren't going to do this for two years, so we had to move to weekly. So we made the, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, we gave it up and said yeah, every, up the ante, every, up the ante, every Thursday. Um, people, some people weren't happy about it, but we, but we needed to do it, and we made it all the way through those fifty weeks, and it it transformed my life again. Doing that, listening to that, that listening to those fifty lessons transformed me again, and so this has been the the highest trajectory that I've been on over the last year and a half, and it's because I'm learning things that I did not know before. Uh, I will just say that there there can be a problem with a regular Bible study when, when lay people, it's great to have lay people get together mm-hmm. and do Bible studies. It's always going to enrich you, right? So it's always, anytime you're, you're immersed in the word and the Holy Spirit's going to come and help, right? right. And, it, and it's going to enrich you. But I found as I look back now that some of the stuff, when the right people weren't there, we were left to our to our own devices and we didn't have the background of knowledge that we needed and we would just use our our again reason but we would try to figure things out on our own and we would come to some wrong answers and that can be dangerous right that can be dangerous uh and because it's not truth the bishop fulton sheen study it, it's true, and it's truth, and you you understand things in a different way, and a more kind of elemental way, and not just about the Book of John or something like that. It's it's much broader than that, and it's about salvation history and and what is this world about? And so I got so um, inspired by it that it, it with together with Jorge, uh, we we said this needs to spread. We've got to get this out to more people, mm-hmm. and the format was so simple in this study we knew that it was very easy for other people who were at 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 it to be able to take it and then take it somewhere else so we saw a multi multiplication multiplication that's not not an easy word you have me doing it now (laughs) (laughs) but we we saw that effect there you go right uh and (laughs) and so uh beginning of the the 2018 uh, we started getting some groups together and it w- we wanted to do it before work because that's the easiest time that doesn't inter- interfere with people's lives. Mm-hmm. And so we started a Monday group and we started a Tuesday group and we started a Wednesday group. You, yeah. Jason, uh, come to the Tuesday group. Right. Uh, and so now uh, in this, we're still, this is still an experiment and we're only in weeks 11, 12 and 15 mm-hmm. in the, right. in the different groups, but uh, it's been great. And you talk about, you know, how, how do you keep your faith alive? How do you keep your faith on fire? And I mentioned, you know, both content, right? What, what, what we learn, what yep. we listen to, yep. but the people that were around. Mm-hmm. And I, I will say each one of the morning groups takes 
on its own personality. They're all individual, different people. And you, it's just this great group of friends. It forms its own thing is I think what I'm trying to say. And so I, you know, you would think I I don't like to get, I don't mind getting up early. I don't like to get out of the house early. I like to sit around in the morning. So it was a big, it was a big give up to, to do this. But now I don't ever not look forward to getting to the Monday group to getting to the Tuesday group, to getting to the Wednesday group, to getting to the Thursday group, because we're still in the Thursday group doing something different, a Scott Hahn yep. study. Yep, yep. Uh, and talk about filling yourself up with great people that love each other and are trying to help each other and are being inspired and growing in holiness together. I can't think of anything better. I think this, the Sheen group, is it's, it's marrying the two from what you found. It's the content. Because the content alone is solid. It's great. But then you add the people. It, it's the perfect marriage of kind of what we've been talking about this entire time. Staying involved. You know, show up. Get there. Be a part of it. And then you add the content. And it's that, that's, a, that's like a good formula. It's this Sheen group right here. It's a good, a good combination of both not only the people but also the content as well. And uh, per, personally, I, I, I'm taking – I'm getting a lot out of out of these different talks that we're hearing. I love the fact that not only we can hear them, but we have access to the transcript, so you can follow along. I'm very much a note taker, highlighter, underliner, arrow pointer person. So if I can make a note on what I hear, or underline something I heard, my eyes will find it quicker when I'm going back to it, mm-hmm. and it, it just helps me learn better. Um, I I like it so much that I've I've sent it back home. <laughs> So, which is kind of, kind of a, a big a big plan that I have for uh, for another for an, another item is to take it back home. So, you're 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 doing, and you were one one of the first ones to do what we envision, which is anyone who goes to one of these studies can become their own leader and their own apostle and and you've already done it and you sent it out to el paso and my only regret is that you can't be there leading it because you and i have discussed about <laughs> right. there it would help to have somebody who'd gone through at least some of it already but the fact is those words are are impacting people in el paso indeed know? indeed they are and I, I i know the people that are doing it there I had the pleasure of going on the extra sheet with them so um friend of the podcast charlie cassiano who's been on a previous episode is actually leading that program over there. And, um, some of the other, some other past members are, are, are part of that group and my family as well. So it, it's just great to know that this is being spread over there. And, um, so, so for the benefit of the, any of those listening, if you've never heard of this, uh, the easiest way to go find it mm-hmm. is it, to download an app. And the app is if you type in Bishop, uh, bishopsheen.com, I think it's either fultonsheen.com or, but either way, you type those things in, you're going to see a little icon uh, in brown, in, in, in brown of mm-hmm. a man that's in, in, uh, with a side profile, uh, c- cartoon or like a artist, uh, artist rendering. Artist yes, design. artist rendering, and go download that, and you uh, you will get content for free, and then for eight dollars and ninety nine cents, it unlocks the whole thing, and you will see as you scroll down on that the Sheen. Uh, it says the Sheen Catechism uh, way down on the list of talks from top to bottom, but you'll unlock those fifty lessons, and you can start listening. And then if you're interested, I'm sure Jason makes himself available that we can get you the transcripts as and, well. Indeed, indeed. That's certainly that can be done. It's nothing that's exclusive to Holy Spirit or really to anyone. It's something that's public domain. Correct. And it's something that needs to be shared with everyone. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. We're at 47 minutes. Oh, and I could, I could I could keep going. But for the sake of time, and I know that I know for you, definitely, I, I definitely want to make sure that we are... Um, respecting it as well so we're going to go ahead and get to our partying questions here um so our first question phil is if you could have a superpower what would it be i had uh 
I, I listened to a previous podcast of, uh, I think it was Dominique when she was on. Oh, well, thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, and so I knew I I'd heard that question first asked in, in, in that one. Uh-huh. And so uh, I thought about it back then. And it, it, it's pretty easy for me. Uh, Padre Pio had uh, the gift of bilocation. If I could bilocate <laughs> to, to be at more places and yeah. do more things, mm-hmm. uh, that's what I'd like to have. Yes, yes. Uh, many, many people would definitely love that, love that gift. Um, but I firmly believe that you would put that gift to its fullest there. I would, I would only use it for good, I promise, God. <laughs> only use it for good. Indeed, indeed. So um, who is your favorite saint? You know, I'm not a good saint person because I am, a, a, as a convert, I spent a long time not really caring about saints. Mm-hmm. It, it, I'm late to the game, but I, I have an answer as long as I can use a venerable. Not and wrong. it's going to be Venerable Bishop Sheen. There you go. He is, by the way, on the process of becoming a saint. Yep. So uh, I would say uh, uh, the more I learn about different saints, the the I love them all. The Little Flower, the, her story is incredible. Padre Pio is incredible, mm-hmm. and they they don't Powerhouses. stop. Yeah, they don't stop. But but I'm gonna if I since I have to name one, it's Venerable Bishop Sheen. Indeed, indeed. And yeah, he he is on his way to sainthood, going through the process there. For those listening, uh, Phil mentioned the word um, venerable. That's a step in the process. Um, you become blessed. You become venerable. I believe that is the correct order. And then you become a saint, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, he is. He's on his way. So we will definitely continue to pray that, you know, that that, that does happen and that would be a glorious day. Yeah. Um, if you could, if you could describe how you live your faith with a hashtag, what would it be? I, I'm torn between two, but uh, it would be hashtag Jesus loves you or hashtag I'm on fire. There you go. And they both work. I like them. They sum them up really, really, really good. And lastly, for any, for for anyone that's listening here, what message do you want to leave them with? I'm going to go to the hashtag, the first one, mm-hmm. Jesus loves you. And, you know, I didn't know that in my life. I didn't believe a lot of things. Uh, and I have uh, come a long way. But I... I I feel like uh, I now am coming closer to understanding this incredible world that God's made for us, and it's it's amazing, and anyone can have the peace and the love that I have. All they have to do is ask for it, and that asking is turning to Jesus and turning to the Holy Spirit and say, I'm, I don't even know you, but Please come into me and teach me. And from that very process, uh, your life will begin to change. And you will get every one of us has has that uh, electrical field that is the Holy Spirit that we can plug into. And all we got to do is plug into it. Well, how do you plug into it? You just have to invoke your will to say, I want this. It couldn't be simpler. And it is the answer to uh, all the despair that's out there in this world, and there's a whole lot of it right now. So just turn to Jesus. And and if you need help, there's a lot of us out there that will help. And, and any committed Catholic or committed Christian knows what I'm talking about and will help. But uh, I would also like to say that uh, uh, come Come try out uh, a Catholic Mass. It's 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 a good place to be. Amen to that. Well put. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day and sharing with us what keeps your fire burning for our Catholic faith. In John 3.30, we do find that he must increase, I must decrease. I want to give a special thank you to Ruben here at Oblate Renewal Center for allowing us to record this particular episode on Holy Ground. This 50th episode means so much to us. And... Um, I want to give a special thanks to our executive producers, Dr. Jeff Vista and Jane Brawl. Thank you for your support of the John 330 podcast. If you would like to be a guest, uh, you can send me an email 
to john330podcast at gmail.com or you can send me a Facebook message and I'll be happy to respond to you that way if you like what you hear and you want to help uh, keep the wheels moving on this project here um, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash john 330 podcast that's a way for me to essentially um, um, uh, that's a way for me to raise money and um, crowdfund so that way I can use those funds to either pay for space online to continue to upload the episodes. I normally give a donation to Ob- to Oblate. That way we can use your space um, or to continue to upgrade equipment for better sound quality. And I have other ideas that I keep mentioning every episode. I have these ideas <laughs> that, that, that I want to put into motion and I need your help to put those ideas into motion there. So if you feel so called, you can donate one time, you can donate monthly, whatever the case is. Any, in, any funds received, I definitely put it towards the forward progress of this project there so um thank you for listening i want to give a very special thank you to my mom <laughs> i'm gonna say to my mom to my number one fan there's not one person yet that i've encountered in el paso that has not that that has listened to to, to these episodes it has all solely been because of the efforts of my mom she is like my street team she's my advocate out there she is my um I don't know what else to call her. My, I guess, I guess, I, I guess I should officially point her as my head of uh, promotions, because <laughs> that's been the job she's been doing out there. So, mom, thank you so much for 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 without end spreading the word of this podcast. It's very very special for me. Thank you. I love you. And everyone, thank you for listening. Be on the lookout for another big announcement coming up with a way to raise money. Something that um, something that you may want to um, kind of wear. Just going to give you a little hint there on what's coming up on the horizon. And uh, if um, looking at the looking at this episode, you will notice there is a new logo. I want to give a special thanks to my brother Joe Nunez, uh, Papa Joe Nunez over in um, 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 El Paso, Texas. My my brother, he helped me uh, design this 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 new logo. So thank you for your help with that. Thank you for your help um, with that, and for also spreading the word of the podcast. And thank you all for listening. Have a great rest of your day, and God bless you all. Oh, I almost forgot. This is episode fifty. I almost forgot here. We're going to end this episode the way the Nunez family ends our time in mass, the way we do every time we attend. And and that is by saying the intercessory prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. I almost forgot there. God's so excited giving those thank yous to everyone. So here we go. Uh, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone, thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day, and God bless you all. From the day I left in the womb to the joy of the empty tomb, I know he lived and died for me. From heaven high above, a voice came down with the dove. This is my son and I am must increase, so I must decrease, and now my heart is open wide. I must decrease, so He can increase. He is the center of my